Hey, hey everybody, I'm Jeff Pollard at solarpowerofthepeople.org and Jeff Pollard11 on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. We have a cool topic. We're going to talk about acupuncture some more. But before that, who are you? What, what are you about? Please. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm Dr. Lindsay Trottier. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine based in San Diego, and my practice is called Level Acupuncture. Okay, very cool. And what is it, uh, can you tell us a little bit about like your process? Uh, you know, you and I kind of talked beforehand, and what I found very interesting is that when you think acupuncture or cupping or the chiropractor, you know, you have to physically go there and get it, but you offer some services that are a little bit different too. Yeah, so those are all really important modalities that help people heal, but my focus in my practice is really serving the patient so that they can empower themselves to heal themselves or get the most out of the healthcare system. Um, I found in 2020, when we first entered the pandemic, I was luckily able to stay open. However, a lot of my patients didn't feel comfortable coming into the office. So I learned very quickly how to manage a virtual care in my practice. And a lot of people would ask me, well, how am I gonna get acupuncture through the internet? And I said, that's not all we do, but I did end up guiding a lot of them through some acupressure treatments. Okay. However, um, that's when my herbal practice really started to take off because it was much easier to prescribe herbs. I could interview them through the, the computer. I could see them. I could diagnose them with their tongue and through symptoms. Um, and, and then we could ship the herbs to wherever they are. I usually focus mostly in California, but across the continental US too, I have some patients and clients who get Chinese herbal medicine um, through my practice. Okay. And um, some other things that have just developed in that virtual care and in my in-person practice is when healthcare became a little bit harder to navigate during the pandemic, I ended up becoming sort of a patient advocate for my patients. So I would help them um, have much more meaningful conversations with their doctors to get what they wanted out of um what their doctors could offer. So help them ask for the right labs, help them interpret labs. You know, if their doctor didn't have enough time to go over all that information, help them um, ask for the right referrals if they needed care beyond what I could offer virtually or in my practice. So there's a lot more to being a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine than just poking people. <laughs> no, that that's actually, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, just just from what I've learned in general, you know, obviously medical lingo, I would love for somebody to kind of <laughs> help translate for me because I'm just like, I have problem, help me. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I like to talk about, um, you know, for the, the weary or whatnot, uh, well, what's the process, especially like virtually, you know, how can mm -hmm. someone get started? So just complete blank slate, they now have your contact. What do they do? Do they fill out forms? Do they go to a website? What, what do you offer? Yeah, so if you wanted to start by being uh, a patient in my office virtually, you can visit my website, levelacupuncture.com, and you'll learn a little bit more about me and my practice. But then, of course, it's just like going to any doctor. You're going to fill out an intake form that's going to be really holistically minded. I might have some additional surveys that are going to be symptom specific and that gives me a really clear picture about what's going on. Um, being a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine, I am very holistically minded. So even when patients are seeking help with their tinnitus or their vertigo, I do want to know if they had shoulder pain in 2017. I do want to know if women are struggling with their menstrual cycles. I want to know everything because it lets me know how their body works. And then I'm going to have a better idea of how their body is going to best heal. Um, but before you even do that, I like for patients to be really sure they want to work with me. So I put out a lot of free content on Instagram and YouTube. Okay. I put out a lot of um, 
videos on how I've treated certain cases in the past and what the results were. I put out videos uh, teaching people how to heal certain exercises, certain lifestyle changes. So I always tell my patients that if you go to my YouTube, there's a chance that 50% of your ailments will get relief just by watching those free YouTube videos. Okay. But for anything left over, then that's a good time to contact my office and work one-on-one -on -one with me. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, all her information will be where you can find uh, in either in the comments to the information boxes. You'll I'll make sure to post that. But uh, verbally tell us your Instagram since you uh, you got me all curious. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have two Instagrams right now. My personal one that's a little bit more uh, about me as a person and a little bit about how I approach things as a doctor is at AccuLindsay. That's A-C-U-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. And I have a growing Instagram for the clinic specifically, and that's at Level Acupuncture. Okay. And now uh, when you have a patient and they, you know, they want to proceed and, and continue with you, is there, you know, I know every person's kind of different, but what's kind of like the, the rough? Do they come back uh, every few days a week, every few weeks a month? Like, uh, what do you kind of, to kind of see results or, or just, you know, what do you recommend in general? Sure, there's a lot of ways to work with me. If patients are mostly coming into the office, usually they're coming in for acupuncture. That is probably where most of my patients get my care and relief. And with acupuncture, because I deal with patients who usually have longstanding chronic issues and severe issues, um, generally they're starting off with two to three times a week for a number of weeks. How I scale it is how they progress. So once they start to see lasting relief between sessions, then we start to graduate them towards maintenance. So if they were coming three times a week, then we're gonna bump them down to twice a week. If their results hold, we go down to once a week, every 10 days, every two weeks, every month. I, I usually tell patients, once you've started working with me, don't come in less than a quarter, uh, You know, four times a year, usually around seasonal changes, just to make sure that we get you tuned up and everything's uh, good, <laughs> that you're feeling good, just to check in. All right. Um, so. But with the virtual care, you know, usually, let's say that they're getting herbs and supplement. Um, I'm usually checking in after their first visit about a week or two after they start those. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do kind of regular care once a month, um, once every two months to make sure that they're still progressing on those herbs and supplements. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to finish this with, uh, do you have a story or a patient leaving out information, obviously, uh, okay. you know, of a certain treatment that you've mm -hmm. done, something fun, something, you know, uh, an example is essentially what I'm asking for of uh, what people can expect. Oh, my goodness. Um, I have a lot. <laughs> well, so I think the most interesting one um, that I've done recently that I actually just made a video about that will be going on YouTube, um, was I had a pediatric patient about a year ago. He was about 10 or 11 years old. And he had developed seizures around the time of the pandemic. And they couldn't quite figure out why he was having seizures. Um, they were non-epileptic, but they couldn't find a, a real reason. But there seemed to be some stress involved. And then especially with lifestyle changes, um, environmental changes at home and staying home from school and, you know, stress of the parents, his seizures started to become a lot more frequent. They would wake him up at night. He'd fall out of bed. So he was really tired, um, you know, throughout the day. And then he started having seizures every 90 minutes, pretty severe seizures. And, and he was getting bigger and it was harder for his mom to take care of him. So he came to my office and I was able to diagnose him and assess him with Chinese medicine. And I found a specific pattern that he fit into. So I started treating him with acupuncture herbs and a modality called microfrequency. And he, within 10 sessions, he was um, only having a couple seizures a week. And they were much, much less in severity and much shorter in duration. Hmm. So his parents were really excited about that. Um, and he was very happy about that. His energy was back. He was um, doing better in school. 
Um, that whole treatment time, I think, was about six weeks. He came in for those 10 sessions. Um, and we were really, I was really happy to see those results. They, they still didn't really find um, what could have been causing them. But I think stress was a big component. And once his body relaxed and um, his body could heal itself, he was doing a lot better. Oh, well, that's that's wonderful. <laughs> and I'm so bummed a kid was stressed. <laughs> but yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, it happens now. I mean, yeah. we're we, there's just so much going on in the world and we have so much access to too much information. Um, and it really does trickle down. So, yeah, that's where my, my practice has been heading to is helping okay. whole families heal. Thank you so much for that story, and thank you for uh, chatting with us. All right, so we'll have all her information available. Thank you so much. Uh, take care, everybody. Thanks, Jeff. It was really nice talking to you. Hey, everybody. Guess what? I wrote an illustrated children's book. I am super excited for this. It's a great book, so please support. Please buy. Please do whatever you feel like doing. The giraffe in the line. Find it anywhere. Thanks, everybody.